Hello everybody. This is Gravity Part 2, the Cavendish Experiment. We're going to talk about why globe deniers do nothing but deny when it comes to this experiment. They'll run away from it and refuse to discuss the uh, actual results. And you'll have to wonder why. By the way, the apparatus on the left is produced by uh, Blue Marble Science. There'll be a, a link to his channel in the description. Thanks for Blue for allowing me to use your stuff. Hey, roll the intro. The Cavendish Experiment. It's a big thorn in the side for the science denying globe deniers because they can't explain it. So their retort is it doesn't work. Even so far to say, like Eric Debay does, that it has never been replicated since Cavendish did it, 1798. Well, that's fucking wrong. Hell, I did it in, in high school in an aeronautics club. Uh, not with anything big like this, but uh, with one of the benchtop apparatus that they use in colleges and universities. Um, our uh, club advisor had borrowed one from one of the local colleges in, in New Jersey. And Cavendish's own experiment has been replicated in full as he did it several times over over the centuries and as you could see blue marble science his apparatus which is pictured on the left is uh, akin to the original done done by uh, uh, Cavendish and what happened when he ran it well he got results that were similar to Cavendish uh, got the same sort of sort of results with the same sort of expected observations and everything. And that's what we're really here to talk about. We're not going to talk about what happens, whether it's mass attracting mass or some electrofluorospectivism thing. Whatever it is that causes the observations, they exist. They're real, and uh, they are very, very consistent. And that's what we're going to talk about next. This is Blue Marble Sciences uh, rig. It's rather sophisticated. It's kind of nice, actually. It's uh, got a lot of craftsmanship, a lot of testing, and a lot of setup went into it. A lot of thought went into it. And this is one of the biggest complaints that the science denying globe deniers have is that they're not able to replicate it. They've tried, they said, to try to replicate Blue's results. And to be fair, what Blue did is, is pretty complicated. It's a pretty complicated setup. You have to have a, a certain attention to detail to be able to get it to run correctly uh, and to be able to, to mitigate sources of error. He did that, and he did it very well. Uh, but for someone who isn't an engineer like he is, or someone who isn't a scientist or physicist, Getting this sophisticated can be kind of difficult. However, there is an alternative. What you see here are several different types of benchtop uh, Cavendish uh, apparatus that could be used to, you know, measure the gravitational constant, which is what we do with it today. It's how we teach uh, college students, who, by the way, run this every semester so anybody who says that it hasn't been replicated since Cavendish is a fucking liar and these units as you can see the top center one the small masses are contained within the apparatus themselves so they're sealed which means that we've already mitigated a lot of sources of air airflow um, uh, you know, any sort of air vibrations, so noise, anything that could cause that small mass to move in an unnatural matter. The thing is, 
These are available for purchase. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you can actually buy one on Amazon. It's like 900 bucks, but you know, if you can crowdfund a really expensive speaker, you can go ahead and buy one of these units. And there are, there are other sources too. They're not just available from Amazon. There are uh, scientific supply companies that sell to colleges and universities and labs. They, they're available for purchase. Now, this eliminates a lot of problems. These are very stable units. They're designed to be very stable. They're uh, manufactured to quality control, so the materials are very consistent. That makes them easier to set up, easier to calibrate, and easier to run. You can do this in probably a tenth of the time it would take you to uh, build an apparatus of your own. And this is what I challenge the science denying globe denying community to do, to go off and purchase one of these. Uh, like the one I showed you was like some $900. I believe that that's the one pictured on the right, and which is similar to what I used in, in our high school uh, demonstration. It was, it was a little a lot bigger than this. It was probably a half again as tall and wide. It's a little more clunky, but you know that was 40 something years ago. This was 1980, 19 yeah I think it was 1980 when I did it. So uh, you have the one uh, all the way on the left, and a, which I believe is, which actually is the one on top center. That's just a close-up of it. And the one on the bottom center is one that's very sophisticated. It actually has data logging capability, so you don't even have to take the measurements yourself. True, that's a lot more expensive. But hey, that's what crowdfunding is all about, isn't it? Because what you're going to find when you do that is you're going to find you get the same results that everyone else gets. Regardless of whether it's a home-built unit like Blue Marble Science and BM Furball, or whether it's one of these commercial benchtop units like this. And you'll notice that in this top view, you have the small mass in the enclosure and the large masses in what they call position one. Now, position two would be with the large mass on the top would be on the left, and the one on the bottom would be on the right. They call that position two in the, in the manual. This is the PASCO unit, that one that was in the upper center, and the other one, uh, the one in the left. So what winds up happening is, is you'll, you'll run it in position one, you'll switch it to position two, you'll run it again, and you'll get the same results, only this time the small masses will move in the opposite direction. So something is going on that is clearly related to the position of the large masses. And what will happen is that small mass will start to move towards large mass, so it'll get to within whatever the limit is within the enclosure, and then it'll bounce back, and then it'll move again. And then it'll get to its limit, it'll bounce back, and it'll oscillate. You'll get an oscillation that looks similar to this, courtesy of Blue Marble Science. You can plug it into this. Now you'll notice that this is also courtesy of Blue Marble Science. And then he has the resting point, the east, the red, and the west, the blue. So that's the two positions of the fixed large masses. And that's how you gauge consistency and repeatability and make sure you're getting repeatable results is you run it on both sides. And you should get repeatable results on both sides. And then you plot it and you do this. Now you notice we're able to calculate the gravitational constant. Now look at that number. 6.69 e to the minus 11th. Now that's 12 decimal places. These, this apparatus, this demonstration, so that's what it's really all about is the consistency of results. And Honestly, the attempts that the globe denying community, Oakley and Riley and QE, have 
done to replicate and show Blue Marble Science did it wrong or, or that he didn't get the results he did have been absolutely pathetic. You guys obviously don't really want to use a home-built unit and do it. So let's do this. Buy one of these types of units. Crowdfund whatever it is that you want because you really can't argue against the demonstration if you don't do it yourself. Otherwise, all you've got is argument from incredulity, a logical fallacy. You need to have actually done it yourself. Measure and plot the data. Analyze the data. Do it. I challenge all any of you science and Anglo buyers to do it. Get one of these benchtop apparatus so you don't have to source materials. This is very consistently built, quality controlled. Uh, replacement parts are consistent from machine to machine, so you can need replace parts if you, if you break something, and you will still have the uh, an operational machine that gets consistent results every time. And in the end, that's really what this is. My discussion is about not the cause for the observation, but the fact that there is really an observation an observation that is consistent and has been consistent for 200 plus years and for any science denying globe denier to uh, say that that's wrong you're either a liar or you're incompetent at research not really sure which maybe i'll start a poll on the next pub chat uh, on the shills because you can't just say it doesn't happen. It doesn't work if you don't try it. And now you don't have an excuse because there are commercial units out there that are easily sourced, somewhat reasonably priced, at least within the price range of a, a, a small crowdfunding uh, uh, application. Go, go do it. You guys can do this. And unless you're willing to try to do this with one of these commercial units and record yourself doing the setup and taking the data and analyzing the data, you have nothing to say about whether this works. I won't even, because I know I'm going to get uh, trolls in, in the comments that are going to say that, you know, this, this doesn't work, it's never been replicated, it's bullshit. Well, if you do that, then you're just an intellectually dishonest liar because this is easily testable, repeatable, verifiable evidence. And here's the other thing. I think our community, our side of the table here, needs to start pushing this, needs to push back on the absolute denialism that's going on in the uh, science denying globe denier community. This is something that they can go off and do with commercial off-the-shelf uh, equipment. And I think that everybody ought to do a video on that exact subject. Not discuss the cause of the observations, but discuss the consistency the observations have. And they have been consistent for 200 plus years. And how verify, easily verified that consistency and those measurements are. This community needs to push back on the idiots so that they have to then address it. Now, I know Oakley's going to say, well, we don't have to explain anything to you. Well, you kind of do because if the observations really are that consistent, then what is going on? Well, we're saying uh, mass attracting mass. And that is something that is calculable off of this experiment. You can run this using the, the Newtonian gravitation equation and figure out what results you should get, too. So it's predictable. If you run it correctly, it's predictable. You calculate it correctly, you'll know what results you should get. So you should do it from both directions. Once you guys do this, once you science denying globe deniers go off and do this, then you might have an argument. But then you have to explain why the consistent results on a flat earth. I would like the rest of the community to do a similar video. We need to push 
back on the denialism to get them to actually look at the data. This is what this community needs to start doing. We need to start approaching things in a uh, controlled, well, not really a controlled manner, but in a consistent manner so that every once in a while we're all pushing the same point. And I think this is one that needs to be pushed. I'd like to thank Blue Marble Science for providing me with some, some of the data. Uh, the graphs were his, the spreadsheets were his, the, the apparatus on the left is his, the apparatus on the right obviously is Cavendish's. Um, thank you very much. I'm Mike, the engineer, and I'm out. <laughs>